Hi, divers. Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. First of all, let me explain that this tech tip is one that our, uh, uh, one of our divers, one of our viewers uh, suggested I do with you. And he had a very good reason for suggesting that. This gentleman has a dive computer, as we all do, and he wanted to change the battery, which is important to do. He went on to Google and, uh, and he found a YouTube presentation, YouTube video, much like this one, uh, that purported to show how to change the battery in his computer. And the gentleman on the, uh, on the video, I, I saw it, uh, was a nice, nice young man, um, and, and he proceeded to show divers how to take the battery out of the computer and put a new one in. Unfortunately, my diver followed his directions and his computer flooded. He was a little bit annoyed, to say the least. I watched the video and I determined exactly what part of the problem was. First of all, <clears throat> he didn't use any of the proper tools. He basically used a screwdriver for the entire procedure. He didn't replace the O-ring, even if he was able to get the proper O-ring. He mishandled the uh, the bits and pieces on the computer during the change, mishandled the battery and other things as well. Basically, bottom line is from front to back, while he got the battery changed, there were so many little mistakes and procedure that I'm uh, is no surprise to me at all that the uh, computer flooded. What I'd like to show you is what's involved in changing the battery. I'm not going to change a specific battery for a specific computer. I'm going to show you what's involved in properly changing the battery in your dive computer. And at the end of this video, I'm hoping that you are uh, going to say to yourself, wow, that was really informative. I'm going to take my computer to the local dive store to have the battery changed. Typically, it costs between $10 and $15 to have your battery changed, unless it's a very complicated one. It might be a bit more, but $10 to $15 is what you're saving. For that $10 to $15, you get a professional who's been properly trained in your make and model with the proper tools and the proper parts and the proper procedures and it's done properly. If something goes wrong with it, you take it back to him and he takes care of you. If you do it yourself and something goes wrong with it, I guess you bite the bullet. I think that's what they say. Take a look here at my bench, Kevin. I'll just show the divers that are watching what's involved. First of all, here's a, a typical line of tools that are required to change the battery and just one or two well, not that. This should, that's a toony or a loony or whatever. That's a loony or a quarter. That shouldn't be there. If you're using a loony or a quarter to change a battery in your computer, you're going to have problems. But you need to have special tools for opening the battery door. There are actually special tools for that. It's not just a dime. It looks like a dime slot or a quarter slot. It is not. And we get a lot of doors damaged because people don't use the proper tool. You also need a proper tool for taking off the watch strap. Sure, you can take the watch strap off. Some computers you see require that the watch strap actually comes off in order to change the, 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 the battery. You can use a screwdriver, for sure. But you'll weaken the pin, scratch the pin, weaken the spring, the strap will come off, computer's gone. There's a proper tool for that. You need, of course, cleaning tools, uh, Q-tips, uh, very, very clean linen, and a brush of some sort. You need a proper pick. You need to use it properly as well. You might need various screwdrivers. In fact, some uh, some uh, computers require Torx. Some use uh, safety locks. Some use uh, Phillips. Uh, some use uh, Allen keys. Yes, you have to have a proper precision set of drivers for all the different computers. And, of course, you need to have some grease, maybe. And you need to have a tester to test the batteries. We always test the batteries coming out and the new battery going in. There's a typical line of equipment needed to change the battery on a couple of different computers. There are other tools as well for very specialized computers that are not in this table. If you're prepared to have these proper tools available and you know what you're doing, then sure, go ahead and change your computer. I know it says in your book it's user changeable. That's a selling feature. It's not a suggestion. For $10 or $15, take it to your local dive store. Here we go some more. Over here, I have from Sunto, very popular name, I have a few of the O-rings from Sunto. There's the D9, the D9TX, the D6, the D4, and then the Sunto Viper, Vitek, Cobra, and Gecko. So there we are with their, with their nine different computers that they sell. They have five different O-rings. You need the proper O-ring, the proper O-ring with the right number from the right company. You might also need battery doors because people very commonly... When they have a computer like this one that has a battery door like this, I mean, that's obviously made for a toonie, right? No, it is not made for a toonie. It's made for a special tool that fits in, holds firmly, and allows you to open and close the door without damage. This is what happens if you don't. You get cracks and breaks. Oops. The door, this is called the battery door, actually is broken and it starts to crack. I have a whole supply of them over here. I don't keep a bag of these battery doors around unless I sell a lot of them. You get the hint? 
Okay, similarity with the Sentinel computers. Some of the computers have a very small door like this, an old ring and a slot. And that looks just like a dime slot. It is not a dime slot. There's a proper tool to take that out. Again, I have a bag full of these at $19 a piece, by the way. For the many, many people who come in with their Central Mosquito, they tried to change their computer battery and ruin the door, and they have to get a new one. So just take a take a, a word from the, the wise, that's me, by the way, and, and uh, think very hard about whether or not you're really doing yourself a favor by changing the, the, your, your dive computer battery. Some dive computers have screw-on back doors. Now, it, it's, a, it's a Phillips screw. You can see that. But which Phillips screw? In my little kit here, I have seven different Phillips screws. You have to have the right Phillips screws or you'll ruin the head on the screw. It won't come out. The door comes off. There's a special O-ring goes underneath. That's an entirely different process from all of the others. A lot of the computers have a special door with an open close on it. There's a tool that fits into those two holes. Sure, you can grab a couple screwdrivers, maybe a couple of hairpins, and you can force it open. Or it's a special tool for doing what you have to do to open and close it. Open it, and then you take the lid off. But there's a special, not a special tool for that. You have to be very, very careful. You don't use a screwdriver to pry this off. Take the lid off, and there's your battery underneath. There's an O-ring underneath there. Again, you don't use a pick to pull the O-ring out. A lot of people will just take a pick, something sharp, and they'll dig in and dig out the O-ring. And as you do that, you scratch this plastic surface. It'll leak. Replace the O-ring, back in it goes. Take the battery out. That's pretty straightforward. Pop the battery out. Now you have to clean all around the surface to make sure that the mating surface for the O-ring on the inside is clean as well. Put a new battery in, new battery on the lid, put it all back together properly using the proper tool. Doesn't take long, but done properly, it'll work, it's easy, and it's inexpensive to have it done at your local dive store. Doing it yourself, you're on the risk. Other computers require you to take off, you have to take the wristband off of this, this particular computer before you can get the back door off. Then there's a special tool to take the back door off. And that pops out. This is very, very common. Underneath there, here's what the door looks like when it comes off. Underneath is this is rather interesting looking cover. This is actually the buzzer. If you have an audible alarm on your computer, this is actually the thing that goes zzzz when the audible alarm goes off. It's part of the actual cover, not inexpensive to replace. And again, it can be scratched very easily with a pick or a screwdriver, the most common tools used. That's some of the ideas. Again, with a multimeter, we check the battery before, we check it after. So when you bring your computer in, you can rest assured it's being done properly. Proper tools, trained service people, proper factory supplied O-rings, not just O-rings we buy from your local Canadian tire, but factory supplied O-rings, proper batteries. Some computers require a particular battery. Some computers require a particular battery and a particular brand. In other words, if you buy a 2450, that's a number of a common battery, <clears throat> A button battery, not unlike this. If you buy a number 2450 and it's from Panasonic, it won't work in some dive computers to take a 2450. I know it sounds strange, but I have found out to my own my own training that it has to be, as an example, a Duracell. Other brands won't work. All little bits and pieces and things that you probably, as a diver, don't know. So please, either call, ask your local dive store what's involved in them doing your dive computer. That happens every two years at the most. For God's sakes, don't run the risk of losing your computer. I see it almost daily here at Skiba 2000. Just a little idea, a little tip. It's an idea of what's involved. It's not quite as easy as it says in the book. User changeable. Pop the battery out, put a new one in. No, it's not quite that easy. I see so many disappointed divers. Don't be one of them. Call me, call your local dive store, and see what's involved in having them do it for you get it done properly. I hope this has been informative for you. I hope she hope, helps you be a better diver. Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000. See you again soon.